representing for DJ Matt Busher. I'm going to set the street hype mix show. Sundays, Tuesdays, 10 p.m. to midnight. Real music and real conversations. I shank a set to the fullest. Up full. Do it, you know. Shell it. Appreciate everybody who's tuned in right now at tdkradio.com. I'm DJ Mad Butcher. If this is your first time tuning in, we appreciate you tuning in. So I gl- appreciate everyone's patience. I had to play some music, y'all. If you never heard some of them songs by Public Enemy, there you go. Let's call them up and see what's really going on with the Public Enemy crew. And what have you, family. Let me see if my phone going to act right tonight. So y'all bear with us. And what we going to do, man, if, you, if anybody missed this, just tell them to go to mb 3 gee on YouTube, family, and they can catch whatever they missed right here on tdkradio.com. The connection sound. We out of Guyana. Let me find my man's number here. Give me a second, y'all. Let's get ready to make this phone call. I forgot to call him tonight. Let's see what we got here, family. Yes, greetings. Greetings. Is this Professor Griff? Yeah, this is Griff. You good? How you doing, Griff, man? This is DJ Mad Butcher calling you up from the TDK radio show right now. He's calling you up to try okay. to do a little interview with your family. Oh, I think that's possible. Make it happen. Okay, Except family. There's echo in the background. There's a little echo going on. Let's see if we can adjust some, some things around us here. How about on your end? Everything a little bit better or what? What's going on here? Sure. Yeah. Everything good? No, I, no, it's not. Every time I talk, I hear it. I don't know why you can't hear it. It's really loud. What's going on here, family? It, it, it just sounds like a delay. It sounds like a delay? Yeah. Well, uh, mm, we don't really hear it on my end. Maybe it's on, you know what I'm saying, it's coming through that, you know, sometimes our phones get recorded and stuff, no, family. It, yeah, it just sounds like somebody has some speakers up in the room. Yeah, I do yeah. have some. Let me, let me turn in speakers some. Let me see what uh, that yeah, works. You got to turn the speakers off. Bro. How about that? <laughs> that sound better? Huh? Yeah, how about now? Is it still echoing? No, it's a lot better. La- okay, I had to turn in the speakers. I appreciate that, family. Sound like you know a little nah, something. Huh? Yeah, I was a DJ back in the day. I was DJ Griff. DJ Griff, that's what it is. We're going to talk about that in the family in a minute. Uh introduce yourself. Let, let's start off introducing yourself. You know what I'm saying? Who is Professor Griff and, and stuff like that? You know, where you from and stuff of that nature. Oh, wow. Like, where do I start, man? All right. Yeah, your echo is back, but I'm just like, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of aggravating, but I can think I can have it. Um, I don't know. I guess I'm just an average young brother from uh, Long Island, New York. You know, growing up in the hood just like everybody else, you know. Seventh son, twelfth child of thirteen, and um gravitated towards the music, been in a couple of bands and that kind of thing. Studied martial arts, um, went through cadets and military and FOI and all that kind of training. Ended up hooking up with Chuck, a few other cats putting this public enemy thing together. And uh here I am. Hell. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. One of your first uh, songs y'all came out, I mean, albums y'all came up with was, uh, was it, uh, Yo, Burn Rush the Show, I think it was, family. And uh, so you one of the fan, co fanders that means you one of the fanders of the group, correct? Yeah, but it's one of those situations where, you know, I was DJing with Spectrum City, and the brothers in Spectrum City, Hank and Keith Shockley, Jerry J, uh, a few other people, uh, yeah, we used to DJ, man, at all the parties. It was a beautiful thing, man. And uh, we used to open the mic up for some beats on, and people come back. And Chuck was one of them dudes that stepped up to the plate. And it was like, yo, like God on the mic. You know what I'm saying? Come to find out that Chuck, that Chuck and one of my partners, Hank, went to uh, Delphi University together. And then um, it all walked into this thing that we put together with 
with the uh, with this crew that used to do parties. And uh, it was a beautiful thing, man. So the thing was happening at the radio station at the Delphi University. The thing was happening in the hood with the parties and all that kind of thing. So kind of everybody knew everybody. And then at that, at that point, that's when Chuck was offered the deal through Def Jam. Thanks to Jam Master J and, um, and uh, DMC. Um, we just kind of heard Chuck on, on, the, on the radio. And then Russell and Rick, they came in a little bit later on. Ron Scola and some other people. But um, that's the way it happened. And Chuck said he didn't want to sign no deal just as Chucky e. D. He used to work he used to work with Flavor, moving furniture and, you know, that kind of thing with his pop's company. But um, we was always affiliated with one another because I was teaching martial arts in the hood and organizing and that kind of thing. So when he reached back in the hood for all of us, it was like that was the crew that, that, was, that was public enemy, that became public enemy. Of course, when he reached out to me, I reached out to them cats that I was training with in martial arts and doing our thing, study groups and whatever. So, yeah, they reached out to Chuck, yeah, that's JDMC, reached out to Chuck, Chuck reached out to Flavor and myself, and, of course, Hank and Keith. I was working with them already, so, yeah. That's how it formulated, man, basically. Of course, can't forget Bill Stephanie, uh, other people on the other end that Chuck was working with. I uh, can't forget Harry Allen and a few other people that was there on the scene. And then Eric Sad Eric Vietnam Sadler. And then uh, Norman, which was Terminator X. And uh, DJ Griffin, that was the 70s, man, when I was in high school. Well, if you've ever been to Long Island, Long Island ain't really the hood, hood, hood like that. When you think of hood, I know what you're thinking about. Nah, hell nah. No, nah, hell nah. <laughs> nah, on Long Island, man, we have manicured lawns, bro. Huh? Yeah, Long Island. I don't know if you ever heard of Long Island, New York. Long Island, New York, man, is 119 miles long. It's where the people that retire from the city go to live. <laughs> you understand? Know Long Island. Long Island is like the suburbs, bro. Oh, oh, Long Island is like the suburbs, you saying? Yeah, yes, of course. Oh, word. I, I, hey, okay then. So, um, with that said, family, so if, if we had the thing going on in the Bronx, um, they saying that's where it birthed at and everything, I, I guess, uh, as far as the hip-hop culture part. Uh, now, you saying over in Long Island, uh, you saying that y'all had some things going on that was a little different than what was going on like in Bronx and Brooklyn and different things or what? Not Long Island was the ripple effect, we call it. So when you throw the rock in the, in the pond, you see the ripple effect. We got the effects of what was going on in the Bronx. You can't take nothing away from the boogie down Bronx. But the ripple effect gave birth to the artists that uh, that a lot of people know today. Public Enemy, De La Soul, Eric B. and Rakim, EPMD, Buster Rhymes, the LONS leaders of the new school, uh, Granddaddy IU. Hell, shit, I could go on on all the artists that came in and around that area on Long Island. Uh, and then it gave you. birth to gay... Okay. Excuse me? Go ahead. You say gave birth to what now? It gave birth to a whole bunch of artists. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. You, yeah, you might want to turn your speakers down just a little. But, um... I was talking yeah. for a minute there. I don't think a lot of people heard a few things that I said. Because I had to turn okay. the mic down. Oh, okay, but um, the people that it gave birth to outside of the music industry was uh, Dr. J. You familiar with Julius Irvin? Um, Eddie Murphy, Charlie Murphy, uh, two members of the group Guy. Okay. And then, yeah, so there's a serious energy vortex, man. All those people come from that, my area. So, so Long Island is more like what we call here, where I'm at the suburb. You know what I mean? Uh, well, where you at? I'm in Lynch in Lynchburg, Virginia, man. I'm in Virginia. Oh Virginia. hell, nah. Not too many people getting lynched on Long Island, but yeah. Yeah, I ain't too far from the Did Lynch you? Station, fam. About 15 miles, fam. <laughs> okay. Real talk. So yeah. Uh, so uh, let me let me see it. So uh, what we have here? You saying that? 
uh, in Long Island, you saying you was a DJ, and you saying that uh, you uh, ran across uh, Chuck D, who was at the party, rocking the mics. <laughs> nah, bro. You twisted my words around. Now, that's what I'm asking. Then we ran across. Nah, bro. We grew up together. I've been knowing Chuck since I've been four or five years old, man. Oh, where y'all like grew up in the same neighborhood and stuff like that? Yeah, well, you know, Chuck was born in Queens and he moved to Long Island, so yeah. Grew up in the same hood. Okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha, okay. So, uh, now, then you went on, I guess you said y'all got signed. Uh, well, you said Chuck D got signed, right? He came back to the community pretty much. No, no, nah, bro. Were you hearing the story? I didn't say nothing like that. <laughs> no. Nah. Nah, bro. Uh, well, that's what I'm trying to clear it up. So you didn't say that, man? No, it, it, didn't, it didn't need to be clear. I said it really clear. I think the people got it. Okay. My bag, my bag. That's why I had to turn down everything. Yeah, so I you, couldn't yeah, you, you, yeah, you doing you doing the remix, bro? <laughs> you no, know, I'm just saying I had to turn down everything because I, I couldn't, so oh. I couldn't really hear you. So that's why I'm, I'm asking you. You know what I mean? Cause oh, I had to turn okay. in the mics and turn in the speakers. So I was, I'm just trying to yeah, ask yeah, you. Yeah, we, we, we gonna get you, we gonna get you a nice pair of headphones. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Because <laughs> what you, cause what you hearing through speakers, you should be hearing through your headphones, so nobody else can hear. Just you and I, come on. But they'll get it. Let me, let me see. Let me see if I can find a way to do that, fam. Hold on one second, because the way I got things sucked up, I do have the, you know, the, the love offerings going, fam. The brother do need to uh, upgrade his equipment. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I'll donate now. Thank you, Captain Cross Coupons. Who's <laughs> that? That's what. I can't hear nothing on my ass, fam. Same working, man. I got some busted equipment, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to uh, work it out. Anyway, man, let's, let's go ahead and try to see if we can move forward on this some kind of way. You feel me? Yeah, I feel you. Hello? I feel you. You passed that mail. All right, sorry about that. I tend to like everything on my end turned off. Okay, sorry about oh, okay. that, man. Sorry, everybody who's tuning in right now, family. You know what I'm saying? The TDK Radio. We're trying to get everything adjusted before we get the sound right for one be echoing on his end. And before I can hear what's going on and what he's saying to me there, before I won't get his words all twisted up, fam. We can't be having that on the radio. <laughs> That's what's good. So, um, family, yeah. you was saying, uh, now, how did you become a Professor Griff, fam? From DJ Griff to a Professor Griff. How did, how did that come about? Was you a dude that was in the hood known for reading a lot of books? Or, or what was good? I think the two weeks that I spent in college, at Nassau Community College, it, it didn't it didn't do me any justice. Um and I think but what it did was it gave birth to a spark in me that made me want to uh learn, made me want to uh know things and that kind of thing. I was curious. So I started, you know, I started just, you know, getting knowledge of self. So, you know, the whole part of the nation of God's earth, the nation of Islam and operating in different, you know, study groups in different circles, different people. Um, I got with the post financial aid papers and gave that mess back to them. And uh, always studied, man. I uh, always, always, always studied. And uh, it was Chuck that gave me the name Professor. Um, and, um, you know, when I was coming up with this whole idea of public enemy, it was like, yo, we should, like, prove to be called the S1Ws, the soldiers, security of the first world. You know what I'm saying? And then, Everybody, you know, everybody had made flavor. Had flavor had the flavor charm. Flavor was always flavor. Um, Chuck, Chuck D was originally Chucky D. Okay. But he dropped the, the, the corny little Chucky part, and he became Chuck D. And in the early days, Chuck was the one wearing the clock, not flavor. But, and then uh, our DJ, of course, we had affiliation with the Nation of Islam. He just became Terminator X. Because <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. he, 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 didn't, he didn't speak, so he, he only spoke with his hands. Is Terminator yeah. X still DJing, or what? I heard he was near here somewhere in North Carolina at one time DJing in some clubs and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's down, he's down there near you. He's still DJing. Word, word, word. Okay, then. 
Well, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people might not heard heard the stuff depends on where they tuned in, depends on how old they are and so forth. Um, let's play a little bit from the first album, Yo Bum Rush the Show. And uh give people a little taste of uh what went on back then in, in eighty this is nineteen eighty seven. So that's about what? Thirty almost thirty years, ain't it, fam? Bruh, you talk you how long are we doing this show? You got two days for me to tell you these stories, bro. <laughs> That's what's going on. We're going to start off with oh, the head. Oh, Chuck, let's go. Let's see what it's going to be. Oh, Chuck, they have to get us, man. Yo, we got to... Chuck, you still there? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what's happening, man. Hey, what's up? Uh, I was just playing some of the music just now. You know what I mean? Some of the... Oh, from the yeah. Yo Brumsy show. Hello? All right. Yeah, that came yeah. from y'all first album, you know what I'm saying? I played uh, Uzi Ways of Tongue in my uh, 98 Oldsmobile film. Was you in the studio? Did you have producing in this uh, music uh, by you being a DJ and everything? No, 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 not at all, man. By the time Public Enemy kicked that thing off, my DJing days was done. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So you had went into a transformation of being an S1W, saying y'all was... Uh, well, you you kind of figure, man, Public Enemy kicked off 85, 86. First time y'all heard of Public Enemy was 87. My, I was DJing in the 70s. <laughs> right, Joe, Joe, Joe. So, so yeah, long? you're talking, you're, you're talking some years, bro. So, so, oh, okay, so you saying, when did you stop DJing? Uh, about 70s or the 80s? Well, you, you of course. Of course, the 80s, but yeah, you never really kind of lose your skills, but yeah. Okay, got you, got you. And so then by then, you had the S1Ws in effect, or they hadn't quite formulated yet? Oh, no, no, nah, they, was, they, was, they was there, but we was training, but I, I used to run, I used to run some killers. <laughs> got you. Yeah. Got you. Now, what, what's, what's, what is like a S1? Is it like a Black Panther situation, or what exactly is the security of one world? No, it's the theory of the first world. First world, I apologize. Okay. No, it's, it's, it's all right. Well, if you know anything about the history of public enemy, like I said a few minutes ago, we had study groups, martial arts classes, and you know that kind of thing, and that's what you know that's what we did. Um, so I guess it would be equivalent equivalent to Black Panther Party, the FOI, um, you know, the Mount Mount Rhythm Collective, a few things. What all exactly got you into martial arts? My my mama trying to keep me out of the street and <laughs> trying to get trying to get me some discipline because uh yeah instead of so, doing um, basketball you know hmm? you know I'm too goddamn short to be playing basketball bro why would you even say that but anyway <laughs> no martial arts was my thing yeah. Got you. He gravitated to you, you know, something that you could train and, and work out on, on a regular basis, huh? Uh, nah. My mom wanted to keep me out of the street. So she says, you're going to do something. You're going to play some baseball, basketball, do something. You're just not going to be out here. So I said, martial arts is my thing. And I stuck with it. So, yeah. Got you. Got you. But the, but the, but the martial arts didn't mix with the mean streak that I had. But then that didn't mix with the, the cats that I was burning with. So, yeah, it was a dangerous situation, dangerous combination. Now, uh, you were you saying that, you know, did you, when you was younger or when you got into your teens, was you what we would call, I guess, in the hood like a knucklehead? You know what I mean? Uh, I hear you saying that you uh, ran with a few comrades. Uh, so I was just wondering, was y'all, uh, I guess, did y'all mischiefs? When you was younger, family? Nah. Not at all, man. We were serious. Um, you kind of figure the guy that I was rolling with, you know, a lot, of, a lot of us was, you know, black belts already. So the discipline was there. In and, in and out of the Nation of Islam, in and out of revolutionary circles at that particular time. Nah, the discipline was there, man. I mean, so nah, we didn't do the stupid, foolish stuff. Mm, got you, got you. So in our words, it's like you've been in this thing like for decades for real. It's like you didn't come one of them cats that went to jail for a minute 
came back out and, and do different things like that or got introduced to it uh, by this person and that person. You saying this is something that has been going on for you for years and that you've been following it pretty much. Of course, yes. My two brothers were in the nation of Islam. So, yeah, but I had an enlightenment, man. You know, Ronalik was my life. Ronalik got a lot. Um, so, you know, I've been in this for a minute, huh? since I was a teenager. I'm 55 years old now. And some people just now discovering Professor Good Thing. I just popped up a few years ago. Now I've been doing this. Indeed, indeed. Matter of fact, uh, I got music, man. They can send me like, nah, man. So it was like you had what? me do my homework, man. And I had, do, I had to do a little digging for you, you <laughs> feel me? And uh, I feel it. Huh? What do you say? I said you play those two songs. And when people listen to those songs, you're going to get yours. And my Uzi weighs a ton, both making reference to gun play. You understand what I'm saying? Mm, got you. Was that during that time? It, uh, <laughs> Because I remember in the Bronx, you know, because around that time I was in the Bronx, I came up there, I think, uh, around 87 or so, called myself running away from home. And it's, I can't call it that because I told my, my dad where I was at at least. But, uh, <laughs> and, and that was one of the songs that y'all, you know, that was pumping through the hood, you know, that and Rock Him at the time and, and KRS One. So you saying, uh, when y'all talking about the guns, y'all talking about putting them down, or, or what exactly was going on with the gun situation at that time period? Fuck that. We're talking about picking them up. Fuck, fuck that, putting a gun down. <laughs> nah, man, you got you got the wrong crew, shit. <laughs> nah, man, there was no sour sap shit back in the day. It's like, nah. But we made the metaphor in reference to, you know, um, the bullets of the words. The gun is your mouthpiece, man. You understand what I'm saying? Indeed. And, and this this is the kind of stuff that we was teaching. So, nah, you're going to get yours. We mainly were directing that to the United States government because, of course, the album cover, we said the government is responsible. So we t we used the metaphors when they're talking about an oppressive system. This was this stuff wasn't on no surface level. Chuck wasn't that kind of writer. Mm. Um, it's a lot deeper than what people say it is. Plus, we, was, uh, we had the rare opportunity to be one of those groups that had a crew that was producing Public Enemy, a group of producers. You had a crew that sat down with, with reporters and did interviews. You understand what I'm saying? True. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. But we had a two-year mission, man. We said we were going to do this or be dead. So, so tell so, me, yeah. now, you mentioned something about groups and crews and stuff. I noticed nowadays uh, it's not as many groups. Uh, they bring the whole crew on the stage, but, it, you know, none of them, most of them just in the background. But uh, being a group and all that, why do you think a lot of that have changed nowadays as far as that? Was you feel that the industry felt that was too much power for y'all because y'all can make cer certain decisions? Or was y'all just like too much headache because they had to deal with too many individuals? Nah, neither one. Okay. Talk to I think society ushered in this whole idea of supersizing the meals, supersizing the malls, Supersizing everything, larger and bigger is better. That gave birth to the brothers that tagged themselves with the prefix to their name, Big, Big Pun, Big L, Big This One, Big Papa, Big Whatever. And then the industry sort of changed. And when the industry changed and uh, gangster rap came into play and fucking and balling and pimping, it gave birth to the little ones. Little Wayne and little Scrappy and little this one and little that one. You understand what I'm saying? And mainly, that's basically what happened. So, no, it focused in on the, on the individual as opposed to the group. So, after a minute, there was no more female groups. There was always solo art. Record companies stopped starting groups. They focus in on the solo artists. At the same time, technology made it more profitable for you to be a solo artist. They gave birth to the iPhone, which is some selfish shit. They gave birth to iPads and iDis and iCondoms and iDat. 
so yeah. And um what kills me today is when I see people taking pictures of themselves and now they call it selfie because it's all about me. Nobody else cares and nobody else gives a fuck. It's just all about me. The selfie. The I this and I that. Everything is mine. Me, 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 me. Focus in on the self, self aggrandizement. Um being very shallow and vague and surface and selfies and me. So that's what happened, man. Hmm. So, so the mighty ego came into the game, huh? A uh, egotistical kind of download program came into play. <laughs> and um, you understand it and you see it. Right, right. That's what it's up. Uh, you uh, mentioned something uh, that was listening to. Uh, you were saying something about gangster rap came into play. And this was around the time that I guess y'all dropped on the scene with around 87, 88. Uh, we had a uh, bunch of Negroes or niggas with attitudes. Uh, personally, I, I didn't like them when they first came out. Uh, it was like, what is this garbage? You know what I mean? Uh, I was DJing at the time. And, but it, and when I started to, uh, I guess, get out into the, into the community in the wrong way, uh, it was a couple of songs I liked, like the eight ball and dope man, you know. So you gravitate to that because of the activities that you may be participating in at that time, you feel me? But during that time we when when y'all was doing y'all was doing like the like I said the, the the conscious stuff, the educational stuff, and then some niggas with some attitudes came out. What was y'all thoughts when y'all first, you know, seen that hit the scene, fam? We loved them anyway. And still do. Brothers was not no Negroes, man. That's my crew. So, nah, I love N.W.A., man. From the first song, Fuck the Police, to the rest of it. You understand what I'm saying? Now, I could, I could, I could, I could, uh, kick in my rated PG or my rated R kind of stuff with my children or around, but nonetheless, I understood N.W.A. N.W.A. was very necessary. Indeed. You understand what I'm saying? Indeed. <clears throat> it depends on how you receive them. <clears throat> So, I would never call them Negroes. Everybody, even the conscious people, in their mind, thought what N.W.A. was saying in their outward expression. Haven't you thought, in your mind, fuck the police every now and then? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, the thing, uh, they was revolutionary as far as what they did as far as the lyrical content. Uh... That and everything that they made back then was definitely different from the stuff that they got now, is what I'm saying. But they was like a a certain birth of a particular type of music because they did uh, express what's called freedom of speech uh, during that time. I think Luke Skywalk, Luke Records was going through it too at the time. Uh, what was that one he did uh, around that time uh, that they started cracking down on him around the 90s? Uh, so oh, I, don't know how we, I don't know how we got from N.W.A. to Luke. N.W.A. wasn't doing anything revolutionary. N.W.A. was actually saying what was what we were feeling and thinking in the hood. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Well, I, no, I don't know how Luke. Hmm? I don't know how Luke got into that, but yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I was just saying. Uh, he he came out with some song. I can't remember what it was. Around the '90s or something, and I, uh, it might have been around late '80s or so. I can't remember the name. Yeah. Bro, you know you need to stop your asses. You were doing some of that shit up in the club too. Stop taking the front, bro. <laughs> What's that? You can go to the club. You can go to the club now and have to throw on some loop shit. Everybody fucking dancing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, definitely, 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 definitely. I, you know, I, I spin it all. I, I was just saying that uh, they were dealing with censorship at that time on the records and getting ready to put the we labels on fuck. it. That's what I was saying. We didn't give a fuck what white people were dealing with. Fuck them crackers. We didn't care what people were dealing with. You understand what I'm saying? Come on, man. Keep it a buck. Keep it a, keep it a hundred. Keep it G with me, man. <laughs> you right. go to a club now. You let them throw on some loose shit. It's on and popping. But I'm saying to you, it ushered in a certain low vibration in the music industry. NWA ushered in a certain gangster kind of vibration in the music industry. You understand what I'm saying? And not, not everyone understood it. But it is what it is, man. Shit, 
Now you now you came out around uh nineteen ninety as a solo artist. Was you still part of the public enemy at that time or uh what happened uh, right no. that time? Huh? No no no, I got kicked I got kicked out of public enemy for being too fucking radical. <laughs> Oh, and then man. I ended up, you know, then I ended up on Luke's label. Okay, and, 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 is is a rap thing in rap terms? Is those some of your first cuts? You said cuts, and you sound like my older brother. <laughs> I played my first song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are some of my first songs. <laughs> well, it's, it's everybody, a lot of people might never heard of it. So I'm gonna play a play a couple of a few minutes. Oh, please me. don't, please don't play that shit. <laughs> Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? This is what. Hell no. Nah. This is what they're talking. Bro, you know, I, normally I do the talking too. He's so giving history. I don't. I don't, hmm? I don't like hearing my own voice when I'm speaking, much less song. I don't. Please don't play that stuff. Come on. <laughs> real. I got it loaded up. Everybody ready to listen, you man. Can, you can play that stuff after I get off the line, bro. I don't hear that stuff for real. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no. man. Well, how about nah. your first album then with them with the game? Like, no, there, there was some. No, 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 no. My first album was Poems in the Game. There was some serious shit on that album, for real. Where? Um, yeah. But um, I think it was done for that time. You understand what I'm saying? But mind you, I was not an MC at all. I think I was more of a poet at that time than an MC. Um, that wasn't my job in public enemy. I was a minister of information. And I, I, I did what I did well. And I was the leader of the S1Ws. And at the same time on the business tip, I was a road manager. So you talk about wearing a lot of hats. You know what I'm saying? All to establish, all to establish public enemy. And then off the stage, shit, we had to go put in that work. So the government wasn't going to let us do what we, what we wanted to do. Ignorant Negroes in the hood wasn't going to let us do what we needed to do. And um, skinheads and white supremacists and all these other people wasn't going to allow us to do what we wanted to do, what we needed to do. So, shit, we did it, man. We got some bumps and bruises, but we did it. Yeah. Bruh, you are killing me. Okay. Yeah, play real African people, man. Uh, no, it's G-O-D, first on duty. And the word, and the, right, and then my, my poetry out of my table was called, and the word became flesh, but, yeah, bro, I'm going to sit back, matter of fact, I'm going to go give you some water or something while you play that stuff. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead, indeed, I'm going to go ahead and pump that for everybody who never, never heard of it before. This is Professor Griff, some, from the first album, this is called Real African People, Rap. Yo, Griff, you still there? Yeah. Why? Right, right. I just gave everybody yeah. a little taste of uh, the Real African People Rap Part 2 and the uh, word okay. of G.O.D. Griff. Now, uh, in that, man, it looked like he was, like, almost prophesizing some stuff, man. He was talking about Gaddafi even back then, you know, and and, yeah. and you were spending some real real, real knowledge back then, fam. Uh, you say you, you were doing more poetry, though. Uh, tell me how they, they went about uh, you writing these songs here or just spitting them. Well, you kind of figured, man, I've, I've been a poet for a minute, but the whole idea of, uh, of poetry, that whole landscape has changed also. When, I, when I'm, I came up on the Watch Prophets, and for the young people that's listening, Google that, Watch Prophets from, from, from California. I grew up on uh, Nikki Giovanni. I grew up on Gil Scott Hannon. I grew up on The Last Poets. You understand what I'm saying? Indeed. So, so, just like a lot of poets today, Black Ice and a few other poets that are out there, really, really, really good, man. And we, I just spoke um, what was going on at the time. And, of course, some things are there that's prophetic. Not that I'm the damn prophet. You understand what I'm saying? Because last poets was telling it for a minute. All those brothers and those, those sisters making songs was telling it for a minute. I grew up at a time where you had to say something halfway decent, half, halfway social, socially conscious or something in the song. You just didn't make songs, you know. Of course, you made some of those songs for you to have a good time or whatever, whatever, but those songs back in the day taught us something. Indeed. Indeed. Like I said, you, you, like you was ahead of your time on a lot of things that you were saying. 
Uh, now, you being a, a poet, looks like uh, DJ, uh, you saying you're a martial artist, and wow. What did you say? You was a manager as well, fam? Yeah, I was a road manager for Paul Gannon. Gotcha, yeah. Gotcha, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Now, um, let's move right along here, man. Now, uh, I got a song that I found, man. It's called Professor Griffin's Society. What, was that a group that you had at one time or what? Oh, no, 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 no. That's, that's definitely not a song. That's, no. Society is a person. Yeah, society yeah. is a person. Yeah. Hey, it looked like you got the he black. Was one of them. Go ahead. No, 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 go on. Now, I was saying, yeah, the black draft, I got the black dot remix. Uh, one of the pioneers, give a shout out to okay. him. If you're tuning in. Uh, so he said. Uh, yeah, we, got, hmm? we, put that, we put that song together and uh, we borrowed the title from the movie, uh, Black Draft, but we called it Black Draft. We were dealing with the triple, uh, the triple stage. Of triple darkness, pardon me, coming from the most honorable Elijah Muhammad's teachings. And, um, you know, cats back in the day, earth and fire, slaves, make side, Ohio players, you know, they said, because uh, back then, men were men, city pentagraph, and, you know, they took pictures with their shirts off and that kind of thing. I ain't got muscle the first, man, but right. <laughs> I attempted it. <laughs> But yeah, the brother that I, I wrote and did the songs with at that time in the society, he got, he, he got signed to Slip and Fly records down in Miami. But, um, yeah, we did Black Brown. It was, it was cool. That's probably one of the better songs. Well, indeed. Now, what year was that? I couldn't really uh, figure out what year was that in there, family, when y'all made these well, you, songs. Well, you kind of figured that was the, uh, that was when I was out of public enemy, so it had to be in the 90s. Gotcha. But you talking definitely after, after nineteen eighty nine, ninety. So yeah. Gotcha. Well, we're gonna we're gonna give everybody you know a couple of minutes to taste of this uh, black draft and this verbal intercourse. How about that, fam? Woo. That's cool. All right, then, fam. We're gonna go into it like this. They say the blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice. <laughs> hey, Griff, you see that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Why, why, why? You know what I'm saying? I just gave everybody a little taste of uh, some of your older cuts, man. Like you said, a lot of people think you're just coming out, but this is from the 90s, and it's like you was teaching then and, and spitting that fire. Oh, yeah, just, just thanks. I really appreciate that, man. And um, I think that was at a time where shortly after that, that, um, you know, that whole era just kind of faded out, conscious hip-hop faded out. That's the rap took over, and then after that, you know, gunplay started. So yeah, it was a rap. I think, I think you know, um, the information that I uh, was researching and feeding to Chuck would serve as the basis for some of the songs, which was, um, you know, it, it was a job that I, I gladly took on, man, among all the other things I was doing. But it was it was a beautiful thing, man, to to see the information that I dug up, end up, dig, uh, dug up and was researching at that time, end up, ended up in a lot of the songs and a lot of the things we talked about on and off the album. But we, uh, you know, with that being said, you can't take anything away from Chuck. You know what I'm saying? Because Chuck is not a, he's not a dumb dude, man. Chuck is very knowledgeable, brother, and just as equally uh, studious in, in 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 his own right. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah. He's definitely a waking yeah, yeah. And then, and then, and then, and then the people around us—they weren't no slouch. That's one W. Bill Stephanie, Hank Shockley, Keith Shockley, Eric Shatner. You know, I could go on. Yeah. So, so it's like you know, what I'm saying all y'all sharing information because one man just can't sit there and read all the books. You feel me? So you had different people doing it. You know, uh, jobs, so to speak, uh, as far as coming back and y'all have ciphers and exchange information and some of the stuff information you're saying inspired some of y'all music that y'all put out and stuff over the years yes but it was more than reading the book bro you had the experience right. yeah so yeah i experienced the world i experienced the african poetry theater i experienced the slave theater 
I experienced these things, and we were there on the scene in the streets of New York. So I lived it, man. Now, do you consider yourself a, a, a leader or some type, looking for people to follow you and stuff, or you just consider yourself Hell a teacher? Hell nah. no. Uh, just more of a teacher or a person to give awareness? I got Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Follow my ass nowhere. Nope, I ain't nobody's goddamn leader. Right. What I'm trying to instruct people to do is lead themselves, bruh. Right. I don't want nobody following me. Nope, don't follow my ass on Facebook, Twitter, none of that shit. <laughs> I'm nobody's leader. Some old corny slick heifer said that about me recently. I ain't nobody's damn community leader. That shit is corny. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. So you you just doing you educate, know what you feel in your spirit. Educate people to follow to follow themselves. They their own leaders. So basically, you just you know a, a brother that uh, is just coming out here giving awareness to his community family, uh, either they bite it or, or don't. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm basically saying I'm, it's my duty and responsibility, as is uh, your duty and responsibility to educate those that are not educating. You're responsible for them. So I'm doing what I know how to do in my lane. You understand what I'm saying? There's an African proverb: each one, each three. We say in America, each one teach one. Mm. But I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to do that each one teach 100. Each one teach 1,000. But that don't make me their damn leader. Nah, man. Mm. What, what's your opinion on, on those brothers and, and possibly I don't, sisters? Bro, 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 hold on. I don't, do, I, I, don't, I don't do opinions. I don't do opinions in how I feel. Even if spit actual facts, or we not. I can't do opinions, man. Okay, well, uh, what's your factual point on as far as those who do go around and uh, say that they leaders and got people falling behind them and some, in some cases falling out in, in the floor behind them, you know what I mean? Uh, what is your opinion? You, uh, want my honest, thought of that? you want my honest factual thoughts on that? Yes, sir. Boom, bye, bye, and the bucky boy is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, with that said, fam, I'm going to play a Public Enemy song right quick, a couple of minutes uh, that people might remember. It's called Can't Trust It, and then we're going to fight the power right quick. Sound good? All uh, right. Yep. All right, fam. Go. <laughs> they started in slave ships. Slave ships. Yeah, I'm here. All right, all right, all right. So I uh, just play Fight the Power, man. Uh, a lot of people uh, may be familiar with that song. Uh, if those that ain't, uh, go check it out on YouTube or, or with iTunes, ain't it, fam? That's where you can definitely get it at. Uh, now, uh, what's going on with that song there, Fight the Power? Now, for me personally, I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't know y'all, after this song, was still making songs. Because that was around the time, like I said, uh, I guess I was changing my mind state. Like you said, a lot of the conscious music, like Sons of Man and all of them, you know, <laughs> a lot of people, uh, oh no, what was it, uh, Kings of, King of Son, King Son or something like that at that time. I can't remember his name right offhand. A Wise, the Intelligent, yeah. and, and different brothers King like that. Son. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. The nation of the uh, hip-hop was really with brothers and sisters from the 5% nation of gods and first. Like Christ the Bass, Queen of my people, wise, intelligent, king, son. I mean, shit, I can go on and on. I mean, rock, rock, rock him. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's the yeah, no, it's the yeah. <laughs> so, so y'all came out with Fight the Power. That, that gave like a, a shift of energy in the game, didn't it? Uh, I think only because the impact of the song, because it was a rally and cry. And the fact that Spike Lee did the video, and it was in the movie "Do the Right Thing," so yeah, it was it was a relationship that was the, the beautiful thing that propelled that song. Because before that, it was "Rebel Without a Pause" and "Bring the Noise" and "Nine One One Is a Joke" and all those other songs, you know, um, accompanied with all those other songs that we, we were doing at that time, even before it, and even after that song. So, I think if you check out. At that time, you missed a whole lot of music after that. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't stop making music. They just stopped playing Public Enemy on the radio. 
And that's what happens with a lot of artists. But we didn't stop making music. Indeed, that, that's what I was saying earlier. I just played at the beginning of the first 30 minutes. I was playing a lot of stuff that I found. Uh, I went to the uh, public enemy website.com. Y'all need to check it out if y'all haven't checked it out. And it looked like y'all done done like, what, 17, 20 albums? Like y'all came out with an album every two years since 1987. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. what? You know? Yeah. And, and like I said, the last album or the last thing I, I can, well, Fear of the Black Planet, I ended up uh, seeing that. When I was over at my cousin's house, I was like, "Where they they got a new song out?" You know, and he was like, "Yeah." But after that, I didn't hear anything else. Pretty much, you know, because uh, even the record company, you know, me being a DJ and stuff at the time, I used to get stuff, you know, promotional material. They wasn't sending us nothing from y'all, fam. Was y'all still signed to Def Jam or what? Yeah, but we never got any place, so I don't even know why they were sending this shit in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> We ain't never got no play from them people like that, man. Black people that was in position wouldn't play our stuff. If you really listen to our second album, I believe, you know, it was some of the DJs that we sampled, and we put them in our song. They called us suckers. They said, no more music from the suckers. We said, all right, motherfucker, we're going to see. <laughs> we're going to see who the suckers are. Wow. Well, why do you think they were, uh, what was the reason for them doing that again? Just watch dogs for the cracker, that's all. So let, let's, let's play some out of that second album that you're talking about. A lot of people have never heard of it. It's called it's an, It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back. Mm-hmm. Yep, It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back. And they said that's probably the best rap album or hip-hop album ever made in the history of hip-hop. And this is one of the things that they said as we walked across the stage in, in, thir- in uh, 2013 and received Rock and Roll Hall of Fame honors. Oh, were y'all y'all in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, fam? Uh, you didn't know that. Well, a lot of people don't know this family. No. Okay. So what yeah, year so was that? What, play the song. what year was y'all <laughs> in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? What's that, what year was that that y'all got that? We got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2013. 2013. Yeah. Wait. Yeah, Donna Summers, Quincy Jones, a few other people were there that night that we shared the stage with. Yeah, yeah. Well, well you know what I'm saying, fam? When, you, when you're in the hood, in the communities, you know what I'm saying, or the streets area, and uh, certain, I guess, uh, states and cities, and like I said, when y'all mainstream, then we hear it. You feel what I'm saying? So when you're not mainstream... Bro, can, saying, I, huh? can I ask you something? Have you ever heard of this thing called... The underground? The what? Say it again. Underground. The underground music? Just the underground, period. We call it the African grapevine. We don't care what they claim. For example, when I go when I go to Houston and they start line dancing and all that kind of stuff, that shit ain't on the radio. But everybody knows it except my little ass. You understand what I'm saying? Right. When you go to Chicago and start stepping, that ain't on the radio, but... You, you understand what I'm saying? You get in line, you, you grab your partner, you start stepping. Right. When you go to Miami, your city, city, and other places, you got to know what's going on because you got to keep your finger on the pulse of your people. Right. Are you following what I'm saying? Indeed. So, it's not, we, we shouldn't offer excuses because our open enemy won't play revolutionary music. That's what the issue is today that we're fighting against. You know, um, now, Ruby Sela, they don't play her stuff on the air. But now Ruby Sailor's fire. Mm, I like to get some of her stuff, fam. Um, you know, God Hop. They don't play any of those artists. There's a bunny's child in there, man. On, 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 on the air, but that rock is fire. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. Indeed, indeed. Okay, um, well, like I said, family, that's part of the, I guess, uh, oppression. You know what I'm saying? Keep us down. Uh, before we won't uh, even think about that type of music. Uh, for me... Be honest with you, and, and where I live at in my uh, area, I didn't really start breaking what's called in the conscious era to the degree that I'm at now until like 90s, about 90, about 90 or so, because uh, I got a hold of what was called the Beholder Pell Horse Book. It was about 92, I think, when that came out, and it kind of opened me up. And then I, I started getting I ran into the Nawapians and all that, and so I started learning more and more about who we are as a people and stuff like that. 
So coming from a perspective of what we'll call it a ghetto mind, you know what I'm saying? Um, like I said, a lot of stuff we, we don't get, you know what I mean? We don't know about. Uh, and then it can definitely keep it from it. I had to go all the way to Virginia State just to find a book on blackness. I, I, I searched all the, the libraries around here. I went to, uh, what's the closest? Uh, in, in Charlottesville, uh, I think it's Virginia Tech or something like that. Well, but bro, how long have we had the internet? There's this thing called the internet now where we ain't got to go for us. We keep, com we carry computers around in our back pocket. They're called cell phones. You can look anything up. As a matter of fact, in a minute, people are going to stop listening to the radio and get their music on their, on their iPads and get their music on their tablets and their cell phones. There's 5.9 billion cell phones in use today. That's a lot of damn cell phones. Indeed. You understand indeed. what I'm saying? So the whole idea of having to find a bookstore to get a book or to know about an artist nowadays, that's our problem, our fault. That's not the artist's fault. You understand what I'm saying? There's people out there still making good music. You understand what I'm saying? Good revolutionary mu music. Right. But we got to meet them where they are. You understand what I'm saying? Well, and that's that, real, bro. With that, and you know what I'm saying, you know, my personal opinion, uh, as far as the different DJs and stuff, and if, if we could, you know, find a way to get it out, you know what I'm saying, to other DJs and other people to see where they play it and stuff like that, because, like I was saying, it depends on what, what city you live in and, and you know, mm -hmm. the state you live in. And in some cases, uh, you ain't going to hear this stuff, man, at all, you know. Uh, well, I'm not, I'm, I, would, I wouldn't even rely on those DJs that's, that's, that's catering to trying to do uh, the MTVs and the BET stuff. And, man, there's so many underground DJs. Let me tell you something, we went through a mixtape explosion over the last, you know, 10 years, bro. They were putting some of everything on a mixtape. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Indeed. This is part of our culture. Do you remember the Chitlin Circuit? The what circuit? Chitlin Circuit. No, I'm not familiar with that. May I ask you how old are you? I'm 45. Okay, I'm 55 years old. Back in the day, the blues artists and the early R&B artists used to be on this thing called the Chitlin Circuit, where they used to do small clubs throughout the South. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Like that. And this is very real. They weren't getting no play on the radio, but they were still on tour. And this is very real because we had something called the African Grapevine. Mm. So I'm talking about the Staff Donald and Chuck Berries and Little Richards and all these kind of cats was coming out. Really good artists, man. But if they didn't get any play on a white radio, which even if they did, it was probably late at night from where all um, black people didn't have radios. But this was real, man, and, and we need to study in history so we can teach this to young people. Indeed. Indeed. I like that. I like that. Hey, hey family, great fine. I like that. I, I never heard of these things, family, and probably a lot of other people that's tuned in right now may also never heard of it. Uh, now, you came out with the, uh, a movie as well. You was in a couple of movies. You had the, uh, what we have here, the Turntables and the Chip Factor. Oh, shit. How do you know about that? Don't and, nobody know about that. <laughs> hey, you got to let them know what's good. And then you, got, you, was in a, then you produced and, and make a movie called Turn Off Channel Zero back in the day, fam. I mean, we got to let them know. Like wow. you said, we got to wow. let the babies wow. know, you know, what, what's good with the Professor Grill. Yeah, I've, I've been in three movies, man. So, yeah, we're not going to talk about that right now, though. <laughs> I've been in a movie called The Chip Factor, you know, with the implantable bio microchip, and a movie that we filmed up in Boston called Turn Tables. And, uh, yeah, so, yeah, we'll talk about that some other time, though. <laughs> That's, That's what's up. You know, a lot of people might need to go check that out, man. You know, if they haven't seen right. it, they can go ahead. It's still out and available, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, y'all go check that out, man. Y'all support the Grill family. Uh, what else we got here, family? Now, you, uh, when you say you went to college, did you finish college? I see you got the Bachelor of Science, though. Right? In no, education. I got my degree on. I got my. I got my degree online. Oh, gotcha. Okay. I could. I could. It's enough to get a lot of our asses. I'm not gonna pay them. Those schoolers that had them live to my face. So no. Nah. 
I'll just have them lie to me over the internet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, just to get your paper on the, on, on the wall, huh, fam? Let me, tell you, let me tell you something. Any, anybody listening to me that's in college or in high school, get the paper. Get the rolled up piece of paper because it may open some doors for you. I'm not one of those kind of fathers or grandfathers that will tell you, don't go to school because the white man ain't teaching it to hell with that. Go get the goddamn paper. You understand what I'm saying? So get it. It may open some doors for you to do the damn thing. Seriously. That's yeah. what I would encourage my children to do. Indeed, and, and also they have the knowledge of how to do it because they don't went to school for it. So even if they don't get a job, they can go just go ahead and start your own. That's what I tell them. No, this, no, you never heard me talk about getting a job. Bro. I don't teach that. No, right. fuck that getting a job shit. Create your own job. I said it'll open up a couple of doors for you. Right. Fuck getting a goddamn job. <laughs> well, when we say open the doors in the hood, we thinking about you can get us a job, man. I'm just letting no, you know. Uh, That's how we thinking, man. I didn't say the hood. You keep doing a remix for what I'm saying. <laughs> no, like, no. It's like I'm speaking a foreign language here. <laughs> no, I say I'm, I'm in the hood. I mean, it's like that's when we when we hear it, that's how we may perceive it. That's what I was saying. That's oh, how I mean okay, I understand what you're saying, but I don't. I don't mean open up the white doors. Just open up doors. Period. You understand what I'm saying? Gotcha. Gotcha. Because if I got a degree in communication, that's a beautiful thing. Conflict resolution. You could take that. And create your own job, your own business. Don't you look up with like-minded people? Lord knows we need it in the hood. We need it in corporate America. We need it in a few other places. So I'm not saying the degree is not good, and the knowledge that you would need to obtain to get the damn degree. Of course, I've helped. I've helped over uh, eight people get degrees, and helping a few out right now as we speak. Hmm, that's what's up. That's what's up. That's what it's about, family. Now. A lot of people may not know you came out with a rock band. What, what's up with the seven octave? No, it's not a rock band. It's a rap metal band. <laughs> oh, rap metal band? Yeah. Yeah, my group is seven octaves. Yeah, it's it, 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 in the revolutionary age of ghetto metal. We call our music ghetto metal. You know what I'm saying? We invented rock music from, from R&B, which is rhythm and blues. We were the originators of rock. But so people give it, give it away to white people as though they're the masters uh, and they're not. Ask Chuck Berry. Ask Little Richard. Ask Jimi Hendrix. Ask Bad Brain. Ask Living, uh, ask, uh, Living Color. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. No, we're the masters at that, man. So I did a tribute, um, you know, with the inspiration of my, um, some comrades of mine, Rage Against the Machine. I did a group called Set of And, um, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's just something I experimented with. It's some fusion, some rap metal. We call it ghetto metal. Heavy mental in the revolutionary age of ghetto metal. Ghetto metal, I like that family. Now you just made uh, some interesting points about we the ones that started the, the heavy metal, the plucking good. I call it the plucking good tar stuff. I know uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the hood, at least around in, in my area, is a lot of us. We we feel that's Caucasian music because that's that's who mainly listen to it in our particular region. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? Bro, bro. Mm -hmm. The guitar comes from Africa. Talk to it. The guitar it didn't, didn't come from Europe, didn't come from Spain or any of these other places. The guitar is an African instrument. You understand what I'm saying? All the guitar is is a piano with a neck on it. And the piano has the keys. The guitar, you have to pluck it. You understand what I'm saying? Right. But if you look inside of the piano, it's the same strings. That's all. Come from the it's heart, African man. Yeah, bro, you're taking me back to the Roman days. But, yeah, okay, yeah, we roll with that. That's just cool. I got you. No, I'm saying that the strings from the harp uh, is, is similar to the one strings in the piano, correct? Right. But there's a deeper history to that. One day we'll go over it. Indeed, one day. That's what's good. So, um, and what I was saying was that uh, a lot of us, I guess, when we hear that type of music, we run away from it. I know, at least in my particular region. So you're saying that the... The, the hard rock, the, the plucking guitar stuff is originally from the African itself. Yes, sir. All right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to play a, a little bit from the seven octave. I'm going to let everybody know and hear what we're talking about. Uh, I got the one called Pressure and the one called Touch. It's, sorry, we're going to play that for a second for everybody? Yeah, yeah, you can play Pressure, do you say, man? Uh, okay, let's get into it like this. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Do you still there? Yeah. Yep. That's what For those who don't know, that's called that's the seventh octave, correct? That's the name of my band, the seventh octave. Yep. Yeah, if y'all haven't heard of them, y'all go check this. Everything is on. Uh, tell everybody how they can uh, find the seventh octave for music. You know, they can just call me directly and get it. 678-557-2919. That's 678-557-2919. That's what it is, family. So, now you, you went from this rapping uh, and, and rhyming and, and poetry and, and, and spitting the word of fire. Then you start writing books, family. Uh, let's talk about that briefly, right quick, man. What, what got you into the, uh, sitting down with your pen and paper and went ahead and published your first book? And what was the name of your first book? The first book was R.I.P., Resource Information Publication. The music is music business. Yeah. So I just wrote a small book, about 100 pages, because I got tired of people handing me their demo and not knowing the music industry. <laughs> So I wrote a small book to educate young cats about the music industry. Yeah. Is, is that still available? I see it said out of print. I mean, can we still call your family? Or uh, that's like... You know. No. No. Not available because the music industry has changed. The music industry is not the same industry. Right. You know what I'm saying? So... Woo! That was a minute ago, bro. That was just like... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That was early, yeah, 2000. Yeah. Yeah, that was a minute ago. Oh, yeah. No, we ran 2000. Okay. And then was your second book the uh, analytics of 20 years? Analytics, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, what, what uh, went on in that book a little bit for those who don't know if they want to grab it? Well, I think in that book, that was a culmination of some of the interviews that I had done and some of the information that I was already putting out there. Um. Yeah, I just gave people a, a peek into what was going on in my mind. That book I wrote out of pain because the book about the Illuminati, I was writing before that one. Yeah, the Illuminati takeover of hip-hop. Yes, I was writing that before analytics. It's just that my house got burned down, so I had to release analytics because I went back and redid psychological covert on hip-hop. Yeah. Wow, your house got burned down, family? What's up with that, man? Well, shit, I put it on YouTube. Yeah, so we'll talk about that another time. So they can find That's it on YouTube, doing, fam? Doing what they do. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. We getting, we, getting, we getting shot at the whole bit. You'll find it on YouTube. Yeah. Well, let's speak briefly about that for a second, fam. Because, you know, um, I had my nerves shooken back a few years ago, you know, running around the community. Like I said, trying to get people awareness about who we are and stuff. And next thing I know, I don't got two false fair charges on me. Uh, uh, one time I was on the computer, it popped off, and a uh, screen came up, said uh, some monkeys are working on my on my computer. Uh, what do you have to say for brothers that may be going through different harassments in their city uh, and get thrown to the ground and stuff like that? Uh, it, I was told from an elder that when they start doing that, then you're doing something right. Yeah, that, 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 may, be, that may be true. But there's a way we have to move, man. You know what I'm saying? There's a strategic way that we have to move. And we haven't learned from what the Black Panther Party, the BLA, and some of the other black organizations have done what they went through. So we really been the wheel. We hustling backwards, man. You know what I'm saying? So we have to learn from what these other brothers have went through. The brothers and sisters, pardon me. So, you know, so do we get scared? I mean, like I said, I had to retreat for a minute. You know what I mean? I didn't, you know, I had a, most people are trying to share things. We're trying to gather me some people together, and they get real scared around these parts. It's like uh, not every we might have one or two cats, but overall, don't have a, enough, you know, individuals to really push the uh, the consciousness that needs to be going. You feel me? No, I don't feel you. No, that's not true. They don't. Any revolution that you ever studied on the globe never started out with hundreds of people. It always started out with a handful of people. Mm, talk to me. So when you talk about revolution, revolution is complete, constructive, positive, positive change. Cape Guevara, um, the Mau Mau, the Zulu, um, I know it's an improper name, but the Maroons and other brothers that have gotten together that set up a revolution, they never called the masses. To me, that's fucking Starbucks. They set up the revolution. They don't, they don't take a lot of people, bro. Mm. 
Mm. So it is a matter of concentrating on the game plan and just constantly pushing forward. Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. We ain't going to put the goddamn plan on, on the it. We, don't put, we ain't going to put the plan out there like that, bro. Right, right. <laughs> right, right. At least make the agents work for it. Goddamn. Yeah. <laughs> He's on the whole goddamn plan. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, Phil. I don't know, man. I'm just trying to. Trying to figure it out around these parts, man. I can get some encouragement. Man, I got to talk to you after we get off the phone on that, then, huh, fam? Hell no. Nah. I ain't talking to you about that shit on the phone. <laughs> Why you come in? The fuck is this? A get indicted hotline? Fuck. <laughs> Hell to the nah, fam. I guess I'll come where you at, then, you know what I'm saying? And uh, talk face to face, then. Do something, then. You know, help uh, encourage your brother and educate his head a little bit more better. No problem. Indeed, indeed. So, um, then this, now I got that book. That's when I think I, I, I met you around that time. Uh, you were doing something at the House of Consciousness. Peace out to Dre and uh, all of them. Down in the Virginia Beach area. And I, you had the book here, The uh, the Psychological Covert War. Now, you had some interesting things in there, family, that I was uh, checking out. Like, uh, let me see. You spoke on like the mind control, the UK uh, Ultra program, and different things like that. Dealing uh, with music and, and uh, uh, how they had the program of, of drugs, using drugs to to uh, sedate us and, 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 and control our minds and stuff like that. And one thing I noticed around here, a lot of us, in my, I'm talking about in, in my region, uh, they got a lot of cats like on these mental drugs and, and different things. Yeah. Uh, so you you talked about some of the biological warfare. Would you like to touch a little bit on in your book that you talked about some of that stuff? I think like on page. Huh? Yeah, I'm I'm about to release part two to that book called Symbology, mm. and people can pre-order pre pre-order it now. Just call me at six seven eight five five seven two nine one nine. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm doing. I'm about to finish the, uh, the second part of the psychological COVID war. Where I go into that stuff, man. So. It's too deep for me to go into now because we only got seven minutes, man. Indeed, you know indeed. Now, how about Acapella Revolution? What, what, what's up with that? The Acapella particular? Revolution? Yes, sir. I wrote the Acapella Revolution simply for those brothers and sisters that were in the music industry and really wanted the idea of how we constructed some of the songs we construct. Uh, we constructed. So I showed the research. I saw the formulas. I go over all of that inside of the Acapella Revolution. I talk about the high cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a beautiful book. I'm probably proud of that one because I think I've toiled over that one and probably had the most fun putting that book together, Acapella Revolution, yeah. Hmm, got you. Now, um, and then you went into your first audio book. I guess, uh, those who may be even blind, they can at least listen to you, ain't it, fam? It's called the Warriors. Yeah, yeah, I put the audio book together because I thought some of the interviews that I did, mm -hmm. I laid out a lot of information in the interviews. Um, that I didn't even lay out in the lectures and I didn't put in the book. So it's one of those kind of things that you just kind of have to, have to experience, the Warriors Tapestry. Hmm. hmm. And, and they can get all this on, online, correct? Yeah, you can just Google my name. All of it will come up. Go to my website, www.fortessesweb.me. Got you. Now, you, now, now you also now you do things for the youth. You say you was training them in the martial arts and stuff like that. You, you train youth as well, correct, with the martial arts? Yeah, but I had the last class I had was an all-women self-defense class. <laughs> Just all women. No men were allowed. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Teaching the, uh, the mommies how, how to protect, protect. Okay, because a lot of these men are run before well, No, no, no. I wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't teaching them how to protect nothing. I was teaching them how to kick ass to take names. If then go make a veggie burger. Shit. <laughs> Gotcha. <laughs> but you also educate their kids, though, don't you, family? With the with the uh, comic books you have, Who Stole the Soul by Professor Griff. Yeah, not not kids. Kids are baby goats, but their children, yeah, because I wanted to create a tool to put in the parents' hands so they can educate their children. That's why we say peace is positive. Education always corrects errors. And you the character uh, known as Black Ops in the book. <laughs> that's called the enemy's comic book. That's not mine. Oh, that's not my your... book is who my, my book is who stole the soul. Oh, well, the enemy's book is Black Ops. 
Oh, there's another book called Black Ops. Huh? Okay. Oh, okay. It was that's a comic book as well. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Well, it's, it's almost about that time for us to roll out, family. But um, before we roll out, it's been a, a pleasure and an honor to have you on here, man. I know we had some technical difficulties and what have you. But we're going to have to get this straight one day. You feel me? Yeah, we're good, bro. When, when we own our own, we'll get it right. Don't worry about it. Indeed, indeed. So I uh, appreciate you taking the time, man. And uh, we hope to get you back on the air maybe uh, and talk about some other things in depth. Uh, and, and like you okay, said, give some cool, words man. to the people. I'll see you on the front line, man. And last thing I got to say is, Miss Passiamo. Well, what did it mean, brother? Yeah, right. <laughs> I'll leave that up to your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, man. You taking it out. Have a blessed night, man. We appreciate you. And also, you got a uh, radio show as well, don't you? Cyrus uh, Radio yeah, and it's, TV? It's, 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 it's Serious Minds Radio and TV. Serious, serious Minds Radio and TV, yeah. And I do a, I do an uh, interview with Brother Rich every Wednesday night on Underground World. Shout out to Brother Rich. All right. But listen, I want people to know, man, um, this weekend I'm going to be in Cleveland and I'm going to be in Chicago. All right. Just so go to my Facebook page, um, Serious Minds on Facebook, or Kavan Shah on Facebook. I'm going to post the fly on where I'm going to be in the shot all right, this weekend. All right. Uh, indeed, man. You have a blast night. We appreciate everybody who took the time to tune in. And this is to uh, DJ Mad Butcher, the Professor Grill. Peace. This is called Rap. It's a rap thing, y'all. Like this Monday, man, I'm down Grill. with the PG. We're on the uprise, living in reality. I, I don't know why Shenko representing for DJ Mad Busha. I'm going to set the street I mix sure. Sundays, Tuesdays, 10 p.m. to midnight. Real music and real conversations. I Shenko set to the fullest. Up full. Do it, you know. Shell it. <laughs>